the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. So when Satan comes to the believer, the first thing he does is to make sure that he builds a system around your will, your emotions, and your thoughts, your intellect, to make sure that the word of God does not gain room there to transform you. This is what is responsible for patterns. And this is also the activity of spirits that you call familiar spirits. It is not that they are so powerful, but they have mastered these dynamics. So they have lived with a people and lived around a geography for a long time. And the moment a child is born, they put in that software. So you find out that people within a region behave in a certain way. Because the spirits are mandated to produce through your mind. It's like an architectural blueprint. If I have a, a drawing from an architect, how many of you know I can reproduce this beautiful auditorium anywhere in the world? Do I need to carry the physical building? No, all I need is a plan. So this spirit, now your son is born, the plan comes upon him. Your daughter is born, your plan comes. Eventually you will find out that all the people who are tied to a region behave in a certain way. This is where it is. It is the reason why when Jesus was born, they looked at him and said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? In other words, we know Nazarene. There's Nazarenes, there's no longevity of impact. Look at the Nazarene called Samson. He didn't last. He went up and came down. And Jesus did not blame them. He looked at Nathaniel and he said, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. Only that something began to happen to that Jesus. He was born of Mary fathered by joseph are we together but he refused to learn their ways the bible says at age 12 is it not in your bible why would the word incarnate what will he go and be doing in the temple i thought he would have just waited until his time of appearing but the bible says at age 12 he took responsibility knowing this that i've told you as god there is no record of god learning because god does not learn he is omniscient he knows all things but when the word God became a man, he had to do something to his mind. Your Jesus at age 12, when his colleagues were running around and exploring teenage, he was in church, the house of God, learning under doctors. He was searching for the things that pertain unto him. How do you think he got to know where it was written concerning him? By the time he gets to 30 and he's baptized, ready for ministry, the Bible says he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah. And with precision, he went to the place where it was written concerning him and he read the Messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said. You find this in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16. And the Bible says... He began to quote verse 18. Now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me and all of that. When he was done, 19 says he closed the book. Are we together now? When he was done, he closed the book. He gave it to them, the minister, and he sat down. And the eyes of all them in the synagogue was fastened upon him. And then one of the synoptic accounts who now began to begin to tell them that, that he asked somebody who had a withered hand, remember? And he says, stretch forth your hands. Luke's account will say that their eyes were fastened on him and he told them, this, today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. In other words, I am the manifestation of this that has been written. But the whole work of Jesus was done here. So the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, let this mind, give it to us, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Clearly you see that the mindset Jesus had that made him a victor did not come from Mary. The mindset that made him a victor did not come from Joseph. The mindset came from the word. He justified that he was the son of God by submitting himself to the word. When Satan came, he didn't say Mary said. When Satan came, he didn't say Joseph said. He said it is written. How did he know what it was written? By opening the book and studying what is written there. If you are with me, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very, very important. 
Now, many believers, look up please, many believers desire to actualize destiny, many de believers desire to live excelling lives, but most do not understand that salvation needs to pour in, please listen to me, from your spirit man to the realm of the mind. You will never excel in ministry if salvation does not affect this second realm. You will never excel in life, no matter how much prayer is prayed upon you. Listen, the realm of attacks and curses, the realm of all, the strengthener of yokes and curses, foundations and all of that is the realm of the mind. And because Satan knows that most people Believers are not prepared to have the understanding that brings liberty. He will create theologies that can believers to be defeated forever in spite of all that Christ has done. You would think because Jesus contended for transformation, Satan will leave him. He still came to test. The whole temptation was a test of his level of transformation. Do you know that? The whole temptation, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread watch emotional intelligence jesus would have gotten angry and said you don't know me you are playing with my power i will not only turn the stone to bread we will eat it together i will make sure you eat it as that's what most of us would have done but look at the way the word of god had gained dominance over his emotions there was no need to prove any point he said it is written are you learning now yes then a test comes again and he took him to a holy city and said fall down a pinnacle of the temple and he said fall down for it is written satan now he said you are not the only one who knows scripture he shall keep his angels charge over thee and in their hands they will bear you lest at any time you would dash your foot against the stone who is quoting that scripture seven what would you have done if you were Jesus? Jesus said it is written, thou shalt not tempt. So even though he used scripture, it was still temptation. Thou shalt not tempt. Look at, look at the control that happened within the solical realm. The word of God had worked on Jesus. And then number three, the Bible now says he led him to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them in a moment. And he said, all these things I will give you if thou will fall down and worship me. Verse 10, Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, hallelujah. Do you know what it means to see all the glories in a moment? He was so detached to it. You know the level of control and transformation it takes to see money. Remember money. Money and titles and prestige and pedigree and all of these things. And Jesus says, if that is what you want to use against me, you are wasting your time. I am so obsessed about the will of God. It is not about my agenda. All of those things can fade away. And Satan was frustrated. Therein lies the key to frustrating Satan. Every time a man wants to frustrate Satan, saying, Satan, go away is foolishness. I'm tired of you. It's not wisdom. That's not how you say it. You fortify the mental realm such that all his wiles and frustrations become null and void. He does not know what to do with you because if he uses hunger and your individualism, you have risen against it. Turn this stone to bread. You are a man of God. You have the power to do whatever. I can organize the conference. It is within my power, but I will only do what is consistent with the will of God. That is, you are managing yourself. Do you know they say power without control is nothing. There are many people who cannot receive power from God. Not because there is anything wrong with their spirit. God looks at you from a solical realm. And there is such deficiency of transformation. It is a risk to empower you. Do you know what it means to be a multi-millionaire? To be a billionaire and yet be temperate and be modest. Look at the man called Moses. The Bible calls him the meekest man. He was not meek just because he was a stammerer. Most people feel that he was an angry man. You try to become a leader over 2.5 million people and see if you will last one week. Are we together? Yeah. Control. 
if you had the power to strike somebody dead and the person looks at you and insults you ah, you will kill that person immediately as a lesson for them like Elijah and Jesus says no do you not know what spirit you are of are we together yes there was a man in the Bible who aborted the opportunity to become a prophet most likely a double-fold career of Elijah's anointing his name was Gehazi look at me did you ever read that any spirit came to speak to Gehazi it was because of the bankruptcy of light from the solical realm he was looking at that means his purpose for even working with Elisha was corrupted are we together and corruption is from the realm of the mind the Bible now says when Naaman saw that he was healed he said no I need to bring something to honor the prophet Elisha said no 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 that's fine you go Gehazi was angry he said you mean you will let this thing go like this this opportunity which leper will come again for us to heal to get this kind of thing this man is a wicked man he's enjoying and I'm here as his boy here is my opportunity to shine look at the mismanagement of emotions I'm saying this because for many of you God is already showing you the reason why you keep praying and fasting praying and fasting and God says it's not that the power cannot come it's not that I cannot make you a captain over many the level of transformation you would destroy people destroy your own self when you are given the power to heal the sick and the power to prophesy to people and your house rent is your house expires your house rent expires and you can prophesy to a millionaire in a moment with accuracy you have one billion three hundred and seventy seven thousand and and a lot of two hundred million just came and it's true will you ask for rent or will you ask for a new house and because of the correctness of your prophecy I'm not being sarcastic who will know so God must work on you most believers focus on the spirit man that is already saved and they just feel that all it takes and you see we do not contend for the things that really matter the Bible uses Jesus as a model to teach us for for a period of 18 years from 12 until he was 30 he submitted himself to knowledge watch how Jesus turned ordinary disciples to apostles look at the ratio of teaching he called them you are a fisherman come you have tendencies for whatever come when he brought all of them together he said ladies and gentlemen now listen to me you are going to be listening to me lecture after lecture after lecture if you watch Jesus it will look like he was not serious with his assignment because all he was doing was teaching other people a man who came to die to impart salvation he was not concerned about his death he was concerned about people who would succeed him his death would only happen in 72 hours and it was over but the men who would carry that message do you know if Jesus died properly and resurrected and there was no succession the gospel would not reach you today to the point that when Jesus resurrected when he returned back from that coronation service in heaven the disciples saw him and they were happy instead of putting a party together to dance he said listen listen in 50 days the Holy Ghost is going to come the dispensation of the Holy Spirit will start Jesus acknowledged that there were some lectures he had not finished he said there's no time for celebration now get back to class and in Acts chapter 1 he started teaching them the things that pertain to the kingdom 40 days when he was done he said all right I'm ready to leave the Holy Spirit will come and take it from there and the men stood knowledge they did not know what to do levitated to heaven and then Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when the day of Pentecost was fully come watch this what made the day full do you know what fully come means the time was matured for his arrival it was not just because it was the day of Pentecost Jesus there was a condition the people had to become for the Holy Ghost to rest on them if on the day of Pentecost the people had not been transformed to a level the Holy Ghost will not be able to rest on them so you you saw a sense of urgency in Jesus it was not the issue of anointing it was the issue of renewal transformation and then the Holy Ghost came on them and look at the first message from a man who had submitted to transformation this is that and the guy began to speak 
intelligently articulating the gospel the same man who a few days ago ran away Jesus began to put certain things in place now the Holy Ghost came and the one you call Peter the fearful had now become Peter the Apostle the chiefest of them hallelujah I learned this and my life changed forever that most believers do not know that God is counting on them that the one factor that is responsible for your rising and your excelling your ability to represent the purposes of God you're a man of God here listen to me you're a businessman here listen to me you want God to do mighty things with you in this end time listen to me it is not just wishing that an anointing and a mantle comes upon you there is a state you must assume there is a level to which the salvation is ministered to your soul a level of dexterity and health at a solical level that is what will qualify you to receive certain precious mantles and certain precious graces are we together when you study, I'm a student of revival by the grace of God. I have studied revivals across continent. I've studied the history of the church in Nigeria with a view to finding out what went well and what went wrong. I have a dear friend who wrote an article about the church in Nigeria. I have a book that was written. I have visited a few sites where revival broke out in Nigeria. And I asked a few questions for the grandchildren um, great grandchildren of some of the revivalists, whether in the east, whether in the south, 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 down to Boni, people like Samuel Ajayi Crowder, Joseph Johnson. I've had the honor to touch the chair to sit down on some of the chairs that they sat on, to stand on the pulpits that they preach. So I'm not just talking to you about cunningly devised fables. I can tell you, in my study, I have discovered that it was never the deficiency of power. It was never the deficiency of gifts. It was the deficiency of renewal and transformation. That every time the spirit of revival is about to come, God will mandate that there is a requisite level of renewal that the vessels that will be used must attain unto. But if the people are not transformed, God will have to make do with the state of the vessels as at the point that prophecy releases revival. Are we together now? And so you will find very, 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 um, very weak vessels, but they are carrying precious mandates and they do not last. Because while the revival is on, for those who their emotions have not been dominated by the word of God, things like anger, things like all of these attributes can just destroy. You read through the generals, most of these people, it was the weakness of the flesh and the human nature, the absence of transformation. Now we have a generation that wants to be victorious. We are trusting that the end time revival, that mantle will come upon us. But most of the vessels, all we are doing is just waiting and looking and saying, Lord, when will it come? And God is saying, you are about to make the mistakes that were made in the 60s and the 70s. Why do you think John the Baptist was locked up in the wilderness? Unfortunately, John the Baptist did not have any known opportunity to be mentored in scripture. The Bible does not reveal that to us. The deficiency of his transformation is what took his life. He was not Herod. He was angry. There were offense, all kinds of things there. The man who ordained Jesus, the problem was not spirit or anointing. This man was anointed of the spirit from the womb. But he was angry and offended and he said go and tell jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another that means you can be a great man of god carrying a prophetic grace but because of emotional the word of god has not dominated your emotions watch this the word of god has not dominated your thoughts you will find yourself doing foolish things in spite of the anointing on you and now you are wondering what in the world is wrong with me how could you be so anointed and then the solical realm, your emotions haywire. You can boil like somebody who is angry and insult everybody and then you are boiling. You are still anointed even while you are boiling. And people look at you with fear like Elijah. And say, where is this guy coming from? Elijah was transformed, but Elijah is not the best model of who the Christian should be. Because there were many things about Elijah's life that Jesus corrected. One of it was his anger. Read your Bible. 
when Jesus came and was vetting through Elijah, it was clear. The people said, look, this man is our model. And Jesus said, no, I've come with a superior template. Elijah was anointed, but that man was angry. Moses was meek, but Moses was angry. That means the moment you want to become a great leader, among the many things you must deal with is anger. Because anger is the cancer of leaders, justifiably so. Because dealing with people is a very, you can abort destiny using justifiable anger. It says in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It does not come by impartation. There is a level of transformation and renewal. Hallelujah. Yes. Most believers are not able to rise because the requisite belief system, please listen to me, the requisite, do you know, there are levels of the anointing that God has brought me into today. I prayed and fasted for those levels years ago and they did not come. The problem was not my prayer. I prayed correctly. The problem was not my fasting. I fasted correctly. I tell you what went wrong. What went wrong was that as a vessel, my level of renewal and my level of transformation has not attained the state where it becomes justifiable for that level of grace to rest. Hallelujah. There are people who pray and say, Father, I'm a kingdom financier. Give me one billion. And God tests them with 10 million. The day they see it in their account, what did he give them? 10 million. And with that 10 million, they are confused. They become a risk to themselves. Because that money suddenly arrived. They make bad decisions. Listen to me. You know the level of transformation and renewal that you have in the presence of opportunities. If opportunities have not presented themselves before you, it is difficult for you to think you are renewed or transformed. Can you see good things? And say no to it because it is not the will of God. Has your will submitted to God that much? An opportunity to go abroad, for instance. An opportunity to get whatever it is. An opportunity to have a good life. But God tells you this is inconsistent with my blueprint for you. Do you have the spirituality, the maturity, and the level of renewal to say yes or no? How about your emotions? What do you do when your wife gets angry and insults you? Or when your husband gets angry and insults you? Or when members get angry and insult you? Or when social media or whatever it is, the pressure to want to prove a point, uh -huh. there is no growth and there is no maturity. Your emotions swing from left to right. People can literally program you using the deficiency of your emotions. They can make you do certain things and make you say certain things. Are we together now? Yeah. And then how about the dexterity of your thoughts, the quality of your thoughts, your intellect? Do you understand the laws of the spirit? Do you understand the laws of the kingdom? Or are you hoping that I will just be successful? No, it does not work like that. What do you know about God? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about failure? What do you know about success? What do you know about spirituality? What do you know about demons? What do you know about angels? What do you know about righteousness? What do you know about the victory that is in Christ? What do you know about challenges? What do you know about relationships? These are the things that frame your understanding at a thought realm. Is someone listening to me? So you can see in truth, that many of the confessions we make are will be great. I know that is psychologically consoling, but from the lens of honesty, many people will not be great. Now, they are far from it because there is no superstition around it. It is a labor in the spirit to obtain superior transformation. A CEO is not a body wearing a suit. A CEO is a mindset that has been transformed. Are we together? Perhaps in this case, the thought realm now i want you to lay your hands on your head after praying we are going to get into a serious phase of mind transformation right now someone's mind is about to change i'm about to share a few thoughts with you please lay your hands generously on your head and pray pray crying from the depth of your heart 
As you are praying, I want you to see all the destinies that are connected to you. If you are a man of God here, see all the destinies that have been praying for your manifestation. In the name of Jesus, a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. Skata a man of God like never before an end time warrior like never before a kingdom financier like never before through the excellency of my renewal the excellency of my transformation something is about to happen to your mentality I like you to pray open up your spirit and decree and declare that the former me is about to leave for the new me to come the former man of God is about to leave for a new one to come the failure is living the victory is coming the defeated one is living the victor is coming the one who is under the yokes of demons and curses is about to live through the excellency of my renewal go ahead and pray prophecy is about to happen in my life prophecy is about to happen to my life i came to church tonight for my transformation i came to church tonight for my rising finally i'm accessing the mindset that will allow the anointing to rest upon my life i'm accessing the mindset that will allow the blueprint of my prophetic destiny to begin to work pray one more minute Oh, the failure is living, living right now. No matter how long it has been there, the defeated one is living for the victor to manifest. In Jesus' name I pray. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high Every thing, high thing must come down. Every Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Holy God's fire!